I'm Mark Wright, entomologist with the uh, Department of Plant and Environmental Protection Sciences in uh, CETA at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. My email address is there in case anyone wants to contact me with questions anytime. So I'm going to talk today a bit about scale insects, mealybugs, lace bugs, um, sap suckers, which are problematic on many crops. Um, I'm sure many people are familiar with, with these things, but I'm going to review some elements of their biology and management. So sapsucking insects are a significant issue in uh, tropical agriculture. These things are pests of many of our crops where they cause quite a diverse range of types of damage. All sapsucking insects are in the order Hemoptera. Um, this is the, it includes the true bugs, for example stink bugs. Um, it also includes aphids, which many of you will be familiar with. It includes scale insects, mealybugs, and lace bugs, for example. It includes the true bugs, like stink bugs and lace bugs, and then other things that are uh, not necessarily true bugs, just by the way. So all of these feed by inserting their mouthparts, which are shaped like a hypodermic needle, into the plant material, and then they suck fluids from the xylem or the phloem um, of, the, of the plant. Um, and in the process, they can actually transmit viruses, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, for example, banana bunchy top virus, um, BBTB, or papaya ring spot virus, for instance. Um, these are transmitted by aphids. Banana aphid transmits BBTV. It's the only one that does that. And in the case of PRSV, a number of species can transmit the virus. <clears throat> During the course of their feeding, they ingest a large amount of fluid from the plant, and then they concentrate amino acids out of that, um, often with the assistance of um, symbiotic bacteria that live in their gut that help them do that. But then they excrete a large amount of that fluid with excess water and sugar, which uh, we call honeydew because it's very sugary. Um, and it falls onto the plant below and in many cases will cause a buildup of sooty mold, which is a fungus that grows on the, um, on the honeydew and can eventually become problematic. This is one of the most recent arrivals in Hawaii, the avocado lace bug, which um, originates in the, the Caribbean, uh, southeast USA. It's also native to that part of the world. And it's become invasive in a small part of California where it attacks avocado. It also attacks a number of ornamental species there um, and can become problematic if it gets out of hand. These are kind of neat little insects. If you look at them closely, the adults, which you can see in the top image, have these finely sculptured wings. If you look very closely at them with a the hand lens, you'll be able to see this. It's, it's sort of lace-like, lace material-like. They're about two millimeters in length. I think that's about one twelfth of an inch. So they're not large. You can also see those little black dots that they leave on the leaf. Those are their um, frass excrement poop, as you might, might refer to it. Um, they lay their eggs underneath the leaves. Most of their feeding occurs under the leaves. In fact, pretty much all, all the, everything they do is under the leaves of the, of the plants. They lay their eggs um, under the leaves and they cover the eggs with the excrement, with the frass, so that they look black, as you can see in the lower image. If you scrape away that black, you'll find um, that they're little yellow eggs down below. And from those yellow eggs, the, um, the nymphs, that's what we call juvenile bugs, emerge. And they'll go through a number of stages where they molt and eventually become adult lace bugs. And then they, they have fully formed wings and they can fly. And throughout their life, they'll feed on, on the leaf. <coughs> this is an image on this, on this slide showing the damage that they do if it gets out of hand. Um, they cause the damage by sucking sap out of the leaves, they penetrate the leaves with their mouth parts. If you have low populations, it'll just cause little pale green patches on the leaves. If it gets a little worse, eventually you'll have yellow patches. But if the population builds up and the feeding becomes more and more severe, you'll end up with a large dead patches on the leaves and then it's little dots of black excrement all over the show. Um, and this, this can get really out of hand. Um, you can eventually have leaf drop, you can eventually have yield loss on your trees if you have enough of your leaves being damaged. In low numbers they're not problematic. Um, the thing is to make sure that you don't end up with huge numbers on the plant that are going to cause you this kind of um, problem on the leaves and eventually yield loss. In terms of management, an important cultural element is to not over-fertilize your plants. If you, if you um, 
provide too much nitrogen to the plant, they'll end up having too much in excess of free nitrogen in the plant, and this actually encourages sap-sucking insects. They really like to feed on plants that have a large amount of, of free nitrogen because, of course, that provides it with the base material for um, amino acids and eventually proteins. So avoid over-fertilizing. That can help substantially. There are generalist predators, things like uh, predatory mites and perhaps some thrips that will eat the nymphs of, of these lace bugs. Um, there are parasitoids, parasitic wasps that attack them in the place of origin in the Caribbean and in the southeast USA, but we have no known parasites in Hawaii and none have been introduced. There are some insecticidal options, for example insecticidal soaps, Safer Soap is a, is a popular product. It, um, it gets onto the body of the insect and breaks down the waterproofing layer and thus causes the insect to actually desiccate and die. There's some suggestions that Bavaria bassiana, which you probably know as Botany God or Mycotol, it's used extensively for, uh, for example, um, coffee berry border management, that it may help. It will also provide you know, a temporary um, reduction in the population. There are also a number of horticultural oils or narrow range oils, high quality, supreme, superior labeled horticultural oils. Uh, examples of bulk oil. Sun spray, I believe you can get here, um, and they can be effective as they smother the, the insect um, and, and kill it. They prevent it from breathing. You need to get very good spray coverage. And there may be some conventional labels, uh, sorry, con conventional pesticides that could help. I want to check the labels uh, before considering any of these things. Make sure that it is labeled for use on, on avocado in Hawaii. I don't know of any, but there may be some. Moving on to mealybugs, I'm going to talk about papaya mealybug as an example. This is a, a, a species that attacks well, papaya significantly and attacks a number of other things, uh, some of our native crops and lots of ornamentals as well. And as I said, it can be a severe problem. It can cause plants to die. It looks like you've sprayed them with some kind of um, highly effective herbicide if you get a, a really huge infestation. <clears throat> so the adults are largely sedentary, they don't really move around extensively. They can, they can walk around a bit, but they don't fly, they don't move from plant to plant. Um, if you look in the image, on the top image, you'll see there's a female um, at the top left. Um, and they're two very fuzzy looking um, blobs as well. Those are females that have egg masses around them. This is massive, waxy, sort of flocculent material in which they lay their eggs. And from those eggs emerge the little crawlers, which you can see also in the image down below. These are tiny little um, juveniles that are able to walk around um, and they can get blown from tree to tree and transported from plant to plant, um, uh, even on people, I imagine, if you get them onto you and move around uh, between the plants. <coughs> They're the dispersive stage. Once they get onto a plant, they'll eventually go through a number of molts, a number of different life stages, um, and they become adults that then don't move from the tree. Unless they're male, of course, males can fly. And they can produce these massive colonies. If you look at that image below, you can see a really severely infested papaya tree. Um, and those fruit, obviously, they, they're, they're unsaleable. Uh, and eventually that plant will be killed by the, by the mealybugs. Um, even if you have a low infestation of them on the fruit, it's a problem because this is a quarantine pest, so one has to make sure to avoid that type of infestation. So let's look at papaya mealybug management, and they're the usual uh, um, suspects out there. Soap, insecticidal soaps, and insecticidal oil sprays can be very effective. They can provide you with, of course, just with temporary suppression. Um, and again, you have to get good coverage because you have to get the, the product onto the body of the insect. What has been effective over the years has been biological control. There was a parasitic wasp, which you can see in the image on the left. It's a tiny wasp. It's probably a millimeter in length called Anajaris lucai, which can be very effective. This is one of the species that was introduced in various places in the world, along with a couple of others that provided long-term suppression, arrived in Hawaii by accident, along with the original infestation of papaya mealybug um, onto Maui, probably. Uh, and then we subsequently found it and macerated it and spread it throughout, um, throughout the state in papaya growing areas. And it's been effective. This was an, a long while ago that we did that, probably 10, 12 years ago. Um, 
and it, it proved to be very effective if insecticides were avoided. I have heard rumor recently that it's not so effective anymore, and if there are people who are seeing problems with the pie mealy bug and the biocontrol is not working, um, please let me know. I'd be interested to look at that situation. So the example I'll use for scale insects is white peach scale, <coughs> which um, utilizes a number of different plants. Uh, in Hawaii, it's a problem on papaya, interestingly. They have kind of similar biology to mealybugs, where they um, settle on plants. Um, the females develop a hard cover, like a little shield over the body, and they live under that. You can see in the bottom left image, um, there's a scale insect there with the, um, the cover, the scale has been taken off. And you can see lying next to the scale the body of the insect and the eggs that she's laid there. That's the female. <coughs> they, um, they settle in place on the plant. They don't move once they're adults. And there they suck fluid out of the plant and um, lay their eggs under the shell. The crawlers move out from under the, under the shell and they disperse. <coughs> the middle image shows the little uh, ladybug larva feeding on on a scale insect, and you can see a couple of tiny little crawlers. Those are the, the babies that have come out of the eggs, little orange um, insects that are moving around down there. Those are the dispersive ones. You can um, see on the on the fruit that's shown in that image there how how these scale insects can actually infect fruit if, the, if they get out of hand. Sometimes you find just one or two around like the calyx end or the flowers and even those can be a problem because this is a, a quarantine pest. So usually they infest the trunks first and then move to the fruit when the population density gets really high. And they don't necessarily cause a lot of damage to the plant as such but they're a phytosanitary risk and if you have huge populations they of course will cause damage. Management of scale insects, um, no surprise, you can use soaps, insecticidal soaps and insecticidal oils. Again, you have to get really good coverage because you need to um, cover the insect in, in, the, in the product. So the soaps are very effective against the, the crawlers, the juvenile stage. The oils are effective against the adults and uh, if you get really good coverage against the juveniles as well. There's some synthetic insecticides that will work as well and you can check labels to see what's available. <coughs> we do have effective biocontrol. Um, my colleagues Peter Follett and um, Robbie Hollingsworth, when he was still with PBOC, they introduced an Incarcia species, which is a tiny parasitic wasp. You can see in the image below, it's there next to a bunch of um, uh, uh, white fly eggs. Um, so you can see how just, just how tiny this thing is. Um, it's quite effective. It, uh, the female goes and she stings the, the scale insect, lays an egg into it, and then the larva of the wasp feeds on the scale insect and kills it. And then there's some generalist predators, uh, like ladybugs, for example. Like in the previous image, there was one in the, in the middle showing um, the ladybug larva feeding on, on a scale insect. So these are effective as long as you're not using insecticides that'll kill them. Um, oils and soaps should be reasonably safe against the insect, uh, against the, the uh, parasitoids. But if you're spraying um, broad spectrum insecticides, they will kill the parasitoids, like aphids as well. Um, insecticidal oils and soaps, as you probably noticed, are generally quite effective. You have to use them pretty frequently, um, but they can work really well. You need to get really good cover when you spray these because you have to coat the insect basically in the product. Again, the insecticidal oils um, smother the insect, so they need to get all over it and block the breathing apparatus on the insect. And the soaps break down the waterproof layer on the insect. <coughs> we have very good biological control of sap suckers in general in, in Hawaii. Some things like um, banana aphid are not controlled by biocontrol agents. We don't have anything effective against them, but most scale insects and many mealybugs are effectively controlled by um, parasitic wasps and in some cases by generalist predators like ladybugs. Something to look out for is ants that encourage scale insects and mealybugs encourage aphids as well if you can exclude ants from, from
from your crop, it can go a long way to um, reducing the problem and to chase away the natural enemies of, of many of these insects. Um, and they actually tend them and look after the, the insect. So getting rid of ants is very useful. I thought it also say something about neem extract as well, because I see a lot of people um, saying that they use neem for virtually anything attacking fruit crops here. Um, but there's some things that one has to keep in mind. So I'll talk a little bit about neem. So neem extract is a really interesting um, product. Um, the active ingredient in, in neem extract is uh, a, a chemical called azadiractin. Um, and then, of course, there are also oils that are extracted, particularly from the seeds. You can extract azadiractin from seeds and from the leaves of the neem tree. Um, of course, the seeds have the highest concentration. So it's, a, it's a, an attractive product to use. Um, it has insecticidal properties, as I'll talk about in a minute. And it has very low toxicity to mammals. It doesn't um, persist in the environment. Um, so it's um, very environmentally friendly, and in many cases, organic friendly. Neem can act as a, a deterrent to prevent insects from feeding on the plant. It can attack, uh, uh, work as a repellent, where it actually repels insects from, from going to the plant. In some cases, it reduces insects' um, growth hormone production, so the insects can't complete their life cycles. They cannot molt, and therefore they cannot proceed from one life stage to the next, and they'll die. Um, and then the oil that's in the extract can actually coat and suffocate some insects, very much like um, horticultural oils do. Uh, but it's important to realize that it doesn't do all these things to all insects. It'll do some of these things to some insects. There are a bunch of insects that are really not impacted by neem at all. There's some beetles that are deterred from feeding if they get onto a plant that has neem um, on it, or in fact inside, because neem can become systemic, depending how you apply it. Um, some beetles will be deterred from feeding on it. Um, it can kill the crawlers of scale insects, um, either by impacting their growth hormone um, system uh, or, or by smothering them, like, uh, like a typical horticultural oil does. And then some caterpillars, when they're young, if you get neem to um, come into contact with them in an adequate amount, can actually act as an insect growth regulator um, insecticide and to prevent them from proceeding to the next life stage and they'll die. Uh, if you if you have large final stage caterpillars that are about to pupate, it probably won't work on them. And then there's things like leaf miners, uh, like um, serpentine leaf miners that we have, the little fly that causes those tunnels in leaves. Um, if you apply the neem so that it becomes systemic as a soil drench, for example, in some formulations as a spray, then it can kill leaf miners. So it's very safe to use. It has very low toxicity to mammals. It does not persist in the environment. Um, so it's really a, a green, a soft insecticide. You can mix it with a bunch of other products that you might be applying as well, like for instance, insecticidal soaps, insecticidal oils, and then BT products, um, Bacillus thuringiensis, is the bacterium that kills a lot of um, caterpillars, for example. You can mix them effectively with neem extract and it will continue to work effectively. The thing to remember though is to check the label, make sure that what you're applying it for is something that it's known to be effective against. Bear in mind that neem extract doesn't kill all insects. It also doesn't affect all insects the same way. It also doesn't persist very long in the environment, so in many cases you'll have to reapply it with some reasonable frequency. Okay, that's about it for now. Um, this is a very general overview of sap suckers and, and their biology and ways to control them. There's a whole lot more to know about these things. And if anyone has questions, please do email me. My email address is on the first slide. And I can try and help you out with specifics for your particular crop and your particular insect pest. Thank you.